Welcome to another Component 2 screencast and in this particular video we're going to focus on the use of questionnaires in sociological research. So normally when we're doing primary research in sociology we either watch people and we looked at different types of observational methods in the last screencast or we ask people questions and we can either do that through various types of interviews or we can use questionnaires and it's questionnaires that we'll be looking at in this screencast. Okay, just before we get started on this topic, um, hit the pause button and just see if you can answer these three starter questions. So I'm sure the first question was easy. I'm sure you've had lots of experience of uh, filling out questionnaires. So a questionnaire is a set of pre-planned, standardized questions that can be distributed to people either by hand, uh, by post, or increasingly online. The other way in which we can administer questionnaires is we can use questionnaires as the basis of an interview. And when we do that, that's called a structured interview. But we'll look at different types of interview methods in the next screencast. And when sociologists are designing questionnaires, uh, it's important that they keep in mind some general design principles that questions are kept as clear and as simple as possible. Uh, questions are as short as possible and also that you ask uh, the least number of questions that is feasible and that we also try to avoid questions that are open to different interpretations although we'll see in a few moments that that's actually quite difficult to do. And in order to design a really good questionnaire it's important to carry out a pilot study before you do the main piece of research. So what we mean by a pilot study is a small-scale test of a particular research method okay, in order to test its design and the nature and the quality of the data that it's likely to generate. And in the case of questionnaires, carrying out a small-scale test should enable you to test the clarity of the questions and the categories that you're using. Now if we go back to the three questions that I asked you to think about at the beginning of this screencast, these ones, what you should notice on this slide is we can match each of these questions to the types of questions that you find uh, within questionnaires. So open questions are questions where respondents can answer uh, in their own words, in whatever form uh, that they like. So for example, uh, this question, describe the types of questions that you know, is an open-ended question. Whereas closed questions are where we give the respondent a limited number of possible answers. So typically they're given boxes that they have to tick. So for example, this question, do you know what a questionnaire is, where you're given the option of yes or no, is a closed question. Graded questions are a particular type of closed question. So in a graded question, respondents are asked how much they agree uh, with a particular uh, statement. So question number three, questionnaires are useful tools for sociologists. Do you strongly agree, agree, neither agree nor disagree, etc.? That's an example of what we call a graded question. Now normally we would use questionnaires primarily to ask lots of closed questions. If you want to design a piece of research where you're going to ask uh, lots of open-ended questions where people are going to have to answer uh, in their own words, perhaps in lots of detail, then you're better advised to use some form of uh, interview. Now the practice of putting people's answers into categories is known as coding your data. And with closed questions, where you've already given people categories to choose from, the, the data is in, in fact pre-coded. And all that we have to do in order to produce quantitative data is simply count up uh, the number of people uh, who fit into a particular category. In other words, we can just count up the number or percentage of people who've ticked a particular box. So questionnaires allow you to collect uh, a large amount of reliable data in quantifiable form from a very wide variety of people. And this is therefore a method that would fit much more with a positivist approach to research 
rather than an interpretivist approach. Remember, interpretivism would uh, make use of qualitative research methods rather than quantitative data. And because questionnaires are often used to collect quantitative data from a large number of people, we can use them to document correlations in a precise and measurable way. Remember, a correlation is a measure of the degree to which two variables, two factors, are, are related. So, for example, if we were looking at education, we might be interested in studying the relationship between social class background and educational motivation to see whether or not uh, these two factors are linked. Now, descriptive terms like social class or socioeconomic status, as it's also known, uh, these things are called concepts, and concepts are the tools or ideas that sociologists use to describe the social world. But if they're going to do quantitative research, uh, in other words, use numbers, they have to find ways of measuring these concepts. And this is a process that is technically called operationalization. And the ways in which sociologists measure concepts are called indicators. So if we're trying to measure social class, the indicators that we might use might be people's occupation, their housing, uh, the cars that they own, the holidays that they go on. In other words, these are the concrete things that would allow us to measure uh, somebody's social class background. So what this means in the context of the questionnaire research is if we were interested in social class as a variable, if we wanted to measure that, we could ask people questions about their occupation. And on the basis of their occupation, uh, we could figure out what kind of social class background we think that that indicates. And what you see here is the classification system that the government uses. Uh, to place people into social classes. So there are eight social classes here uh, based on particular types of occupations. So what we just highlighted here is that one of the big advantages of using pre-coded questions, closed questions, is we can quantify data and that might enable us to document uh, correlations between uh, different sets of variables. Other advantages of questionnaires well, this is a method that is practical. It's relatively quick and easy to complete and administer. In the case of a self-completion questionnaire, so one that you give out and people uh, fill out in their own time, the anonymity of doing that might improve the validity of the collected data because they're not going to be uh, influenced by the presence of an interviewer. Um, in terms of sampling, this is a method that because it's relatively easy to complete and you can send it out online or via the post, you can contact and question large numbers of people uh, in different areas of the country. So you can build up quite a big and representative sample. And I've also mentioned the reliability. This is the most reliable way of asking questions because everything is standardised. People ask the same questions in the same way. So it's a method that can easily be repeated. But there are limitations to this method. I think this method would lack validity if the aim of your research was to really examine complex issues and people's opinions in depth and detail. Uh, then it would be better to use a research method that produce good qualitative data. Uh, there's a lack of flexibility. You can't ask follow-up questions or ask for clarification in the way that you might be able to do with certain types of interviews. And the response rate can be a problem, particularly if you're sending questionnaires out in the post. Uh, they often end up in the bin uh, rather than being returned. And another big problem that might affect the validity of your data is this problem that I've called the meaning problem. So even though questionnaires are meant to be standardised, the reality is the same word used on a questionnaire can mean different things to different respondents. They can attach different meanings to the same uh, words. Just give you a simple example. Let's say you're doing a questionnaire on uh, teaching and you're asked, how would you describe your teacher? So, excellent. Quite good, average, don't know, I never listen, poor, very boring, or a complete tosser. Now the problem with this type of question 
is of course two students could tick the same box. They could both say that their teacher is excellent, but they might mean completely different things by excellent. So one teacher, or sorry, one student could say, well, their teacher is very strict, uh, their teacher sets them lots of homework, they're pushed to really achieve at a high level, uh, they're an excellent teacher. Whereas another student might say, well, my teacher's very laid back, uh, not much work is set, they don't chase us up for things like homework, it's really easy, they're an excellent teacher. So people might tick the same box and they form uh, part of the same percentage figure, but they might mean completely different things. And then finally, another big weakness with questionnaires is what has been called the imposition problem. And this refers to the risk that the researcher, uh, when asking questions, might be imposing their own views on the people being researched rather than getting what they really think. So it's the researcher who decides what the questions are going to be, how they're worded, how they're phrased, and if it's closed questions, they even decide what the range of answers are. And the poor old respondent can barely get a word in edgeways. So it's back to this methodology seesaw. If you are looking for a method that's going to produce reliable data and representative data, then questionnaires are a good method. But if, on the other hand, you want more in-depth information about people's experiences, about people's views, about complex issues, then this is a method that may lack validity. However, don't fall into the trap of thinking that methods are either good or bad. When you're evaluating the usefulness of a research method, the key thing to think about is what's the purpose of the research? And if the purpose of the research is to find out uh, simple uh, factual data from a large amount of people um, living in different areas of the country, then questionnaires are probably a very useful method.